yeah, to some of the roles which are a little bit non-technical, like the product, like business analyst and project management, QA tester, and so on. Now, each of these areas are huge in themselves, and there's a lot of potential in all of them. So it's okay to pick any one of them. You may want to, um, I've seen some of the people who joined back, they may have started their career as a developer, but they, they want to move into things like project management or business analyst, and which is fine. Um, I see the other way around as well, so either should be fine. <clears throat> Moving forward, so uh, coming back to a workplace after taking a, a break is going to be a roller coaster. Uh, it's going to be very different. You may be on the top of your game, you may be an expert, but when you start again, you will have to start things from the down bottom, from scratch, and you should be mentally prepared for it. I, I don't intend to scare you by this, but it's just a reality. And um, my, my firm as well, we do return to work program, and when we get uh, people back after break, we put them through an internship program so that they can slowly absorb um, the change and get more used to working in a corporate environment. It's all about um, keeping yourself mentally prepared and also the organization absorbing this cost. Okay, so let's talk about how to get into your new job. And the obvious answer is you need to prepare for it. So assuming you have selected an area for yourself and you can, um, the first thing you can do is just refresh your concepts and you can do it either um, by going through uh, your learnings or you can take a refresher course. Now, on the slides are listed some of the sites which provide these online trainings and most of them are free and they offer courses from introductory to academic and some of the courses are really good. So um, my suggestion is that if, if you're interested in a technology or in one, a particular skill, it's better to equip yourself with some courses. And these courses are really lightweight. You can take it um, in over a period of time. You can stagger. You can set the pace as you require. So it's, it's, this is relatively easy, something very easy to do it. Um, for those who are looking to join back as a developer, as a technologist, the best thing is to practice what you have learned so far. So the courses will give you theoretical knowledge, but as you know, it's not enough because the interviews would be grilling more on the design, how to apply those theoretical knowledge. So it's best to get some practice into coding. I've just written Hello World program in the four languages I know, and I've taken this print out uh, shots of these IDs just to demonstrate that you can start with something as basic as Hello World to something really bigger. But, but the key thing is um, do start coding for those who do want to get back into a technology role. Um, one of the issues that we often find with the candidates are, and this is true for um, the new joiners as well, that they do not have a experience and they do not have experience because they have not worked previously. So it's, it's like a chicken and egg situation. So unless you work, you will not get experience. But if you do not have experience, you'll not get work. So what are the, some of the things we can do? So one of the ideas is to contribute to open source development. So I've given some examples of open source projects that are going on. And you can contribute into them by various ways. You can um, provide some code to add new features. You can even do their documentation. You can do testing, uh, bug fixes. You can design their GUI, their logo, you can do localization and so forth. There are various advantages of getting into this community. First, it gives you experience because you will be working with developers across the globe. You will get to see some of the best coding practices. You will learn um, by looking at what other people are doing. Second is that you will make friends with that community who can help you refer a job so that way it's it's a good way to build connections and the third is it will give you brownie points you can add it to your resume um, as, as a hiring manager when we are 
screening candidates and uh, making choices in terms of whom to call for an interview or not, we also look at experience beyond their day to day. So those who have contributed into open source community or have done conferences or published papers, they do get, uh, they do get extra uh, points for doing it. So uh, just going a little bit more detail into some of the open sources and you can search actually on the net and there will be hundreds of them. But uh, for example, Eclipse Tree is, uh, you may be familiar with the Eclipse ID for development. This is Eclipse version um, for uh, Java developers, uh, which is integrated with the cloud workspace. Similarly, Atom is a text editor um, and GNU Cache is a money management uh, system. And Cody, you probably know this already, is a uh, open source media player. So these are some of the options um, wherein you can do something without any bottlenecks. I mean, you don't need to um, apply. You can just contribute um, directly through various ways. Um, now, technology is a changing world and things change rapidly. And you need to keep, and we all need to keep up to date. And one of the ways of keeping up to date is by reading technical blogs. Now, some of the sites I've listed, these are the ones that I go through. There could be hundreds of other sites. Um, it's good to know what's going on. It may not be uh, limited to your skill set, but it could be like generically what are the most trending technologies. And then you can look at how, how these technologies can impact your, your world and so forth. Uh, moving on, um, so reading is all good, but uh, you could also apply reading uh, by contributing to some of the open forums. So uh, forums like Stack Overflow, Stack Exchange, and developer.com are these forums where people uh, raise questions and they get answered by the community. And they range from various, and the various categories, I mean, they could be technology-wise categories, they could be Application-wide categories could be, uh, you know, questions on algorithms, data structures, to questions on project management, and so forth. Um, it it helps to um, to plug in and to go through the question answers and try to answer because a it improves your knowledge and b again going same point as I talked about the open source development model, wherein um, if you contribute, you get noticed and uh, hiring managers do look at those things while screening candidates and getting uh, making calls to them. And obviously it improves your uh, knowledge. And again, it's fairly easy to get into it. I mean, these sites are all free. You, you may have already been visiting them and contributing them. And all you need to do is spend some time going through the questions, finding out which ones you know or asking questions and just helping out and in turn getting benefited from them. Okay, last but not the least, um, networking, which is really important. Now, I, I know some of us may think networking as not really a good thing to do, but it's more like building relationships because um, if you're out from the market and you want to come back, you would need help. So you can tap into recruiters, you can tap into, you can apply directly, but if you have a friend circle, if you if you know your old colleagues well, they can help you um, get a launching pad. So how, how does one go about networking? Some of the simple things will be get in touch with old colleagues and see if they can find a job in your previous organization or if they have contacts anywhere else. Um, obviously, um, update your profile on LinkedIn, which is kind of these days considered as the golden source for all uh, hiring. Um, attend conferences and seminars. Uh, again, um, these are some things which you can um, attend to network. For example, uh, Grace Hopper is one of the largest meet of women technologists. It happens annually in uh, Bangalore. I have been attending Grace Hopper for the last many years. And um, the things I like about that conference is a, I get to meet with a lot of like-minded people. And second part is they, they also have sessions on technology. So I, I attend those sessions and they're very um, useful. So, um, so conferences and seminars are a great way to uh, keep yourself current, make 
make network and also get benefited out of it. Um, you may also want to, if, if, if you are um, not fully ready to go out to work, you may also want to look at something part-time um, or you may just want to look at volunteering opportunities just to um, hone your tech skills so that when you actually apply, you, you are more confident of uh, getting through. Um, okay, lastly, um, stay positive. Uh, everything, um, you know, all the things that we talk about, they cannot be achieved overnight. They are going to take time. Um, you need to be patient. Uh, maybe set yourself some goals. Try to do one thing a day or one thing a week, like read few technical blocks a week. Then next week, maybe write some code or do things like that don't get overwhelmed by the amount of information knowledge floating around um, define your priorities find out what is important to you and just be flexible and open-minded if, if you go out and ask for a job it may not uh, be exactly the same as what you you were working on previously so stay away from comparison in that case because um, it's it's a new innings for you so everything that you do would be uh you know starting afresh and uh be, be positive it it takes it takes time and uh, slowly and steadily you will make it uh, where you want to be um but it's important that you stay positive and don't get overwhelmed by um all that is happening around you and um uh, here's wishing you um, good luck. I hope um, you all do well in your career. And lastly, um, I, I want to, um, Gayatri covered it, uh, I think, previously as well, but uh, there, there is this roadshow on 16th, uh, which is a Saturday. Uh, we're doing a speed mentoring session. It will be nice if some of you or most of you can make it uh, to that session at um, 11 o'clock on Saturday. Yeah. So with that, I would hand it over back to Gatri. Uh, so we are open up for the question and answer session. If you have any questions, please unmute your line and you can ask the question or you can leave your questions in the chat window and I can read it out. Uh, so Snigda, when you were talking about open sources uh, be, um, or forums, how can they, you know, um, volunteer for it? Like, is there something, a way to connect with them? Um, yeah, so <clears throat> if you just uh, Google open source software, mm -hmm. it will um, you will come across sites that list on all the open source software communities. So if I just give an example of Eclipse G, mm -hmm. um, if you go onto the website, um, they, they would have a login process, which you have to just put your credentials and log in. And then you can, uh, you can see that what all is happening. So the fact it's open source means everything is available online. You can see the code base. You can see um, who all are making changes into the code. They have a GitHub repository where all the code is put. And they would have a list of um, enhancement or requirements that are being put forward. So you can raise your hand that, OK, I want to take this up. And no one is going to stop you. But the only thing is, when you're working in open source, be cognizant there are multiple people working on it. So if you write a piece of code, it will get reviewed, it will get tested, um, it may get rejected as well if it's not meeting the standards. Um, so that is how you contribute while coding. But then there, I would suggest that as a newbie, don't start with coding. Start with doing something like testing. So you can take a piece of feature to test. So you can download that software run it, install it on your home machine, and you can start using it and start testing it. And then if you find a bug, you can write description of the bug and upload it. So that way you'll get familiar with uh, the functionality and also the code behind it. Or you can do e even more simple, just a documentation part that, okay, this is a software, how does one use it? So once you, so uh, Gati, there's, like, there's no uh, real, um, procedure here it's up to you how you want to do and everything is open mm -hmm. it's just that there are too many gatekeepers like whatever you do will get reviewed by a community mm -hmm. so being an open source they do have strict rules in terms of regulation of what can go in and what can 
go out. It's 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 kind of like Wikipedia where people can write, mm -hmm. but then there there is there are reviewers who actually review and have the ability to remove your content or approve it. Got it. So once uh, say that they have uh, reviewed the content and uh, approved it, and uh, it it works for them, but will the person get a certificate or something like that to show that they have worked with them? So um, different uh, different groups vary differently. So, uh, I I know someone in my uh, organization. She used to work. She has contributed to Red Hat Linux. And uh, she she got a certification. In fact, she got invited to their a conference uh, they had in uh, California. And mm -hmm. so they they do recognize uh, your efforts and uh, accordingly give benefits. But regardless, e even if you do not get a certificate, you can still put in your resume that you have contributed to open source. You can put your GitHub handle, and that's good enough. And then someone who wants to see whether you have actually done it can go to that site and validate. Okay, sounds good. Okay, uh, so we have a question from Kalpana who says, my question is real realistically, are there any part-time roles in project management or business analysis in the job market? Okay, um, I, I I would think so. Uh, okay, so if, if I just look at my organization, um, the business analyst and the project managers, they, they are full-time. But um, in technology, I, I do see people um, working part time, like three days a week or uh, working one day uh, at work and rest of the day working from home. I see no reason why a business analyst or a project management role cannot be part time if technology, core technology roles could be. Um, any other questions, ladies? You can unmute your line and ask your question. Hi, Smita. Hi. Uh, hi, this is part. It was so soothing listening to you. I am not a techie person at all, but when I just joined the webinar, I didn't feel like leaving it. <laughs> I'm, totally, <laughs> I'm totally from a background, you know, like I have done my biotechnology research and all. But what came to my mind when you were talking, actually, yeah, I have a sister and she did her PhD in English. And what mm -hmm. she did was, uh, like, um, we are ESMEs, okay? So, like, she used the ESMEs words. And coded yeah. it into. She used some codes. Okay, how that's how you can like in if, if I type in a Hindi word and I want to get a translation to say any of the language, you can do it right. So right. Uh, what I basically want is I am zero you know, in a zero level. <laughs> I know nothing <laughs> about. There's a, someone unmuted. I'm sure. Yeah, is okay. it clear now? Yeah, it's better. Yeah, what I want like uh, from for a person like me who is not much into this technical world, except that we are the end users. <laughs> so anything is there for us, like maybe EDX or any online courses where we can at least get some beginner information. Yeah. So not I mean, if, yes. yeah. So if if you're not a technologist, I mean, the areas that you could look for yourself if you want to get into this area would be business analyst or project management. I mean, project management just needs organization skills, which most women have better than men, and okay. attention to detail. Now, mm -hmm. there are um, courses, and there are also mm -hmm. uh, certifications. So there are certifications okay. like uh, Six Sigma and PMI. And uh, so over there, there's a written exam. You clear, you get a certificate. And most project managers, PMOs. Because I have, have a yellow belt certification for Six Sigma. OK, cool. Like, um, so, OK, so you, you already know uh, all this then. Um, yeah, okay. What is the beginner level, you know? Yeah, so That's... you can then go further. I mean, hmm. I, I, I am not a karate fan, and I'm not a project management, <laughs> but I know this like green belt and of what yeah, yeah. color over there, right? Um, so you can further um, do those certifications. Um, and there would be online courses. So for example, Agile. Agile is um, a methodology that is being used uh, globally. You may have heard right. of it as well. Yeah, um, okay, project managers do use Agile. Uh, and it, it's it's just a software development life cycle. And there will be tons of courses on, on Agile or design mm -hmm. thinking. So th those are things that may be applicable to your area. And mm -hmm. and uh, some of these sites will have courses on them. Right. It doesn't require to have a prerequisite for a BTEC in computers or something no. like that? 
no 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 it 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 doesn't so the, the beauty of um, all these online courses is that they tailor to a wide range of people right from beginners to newbies to experts so you'd have to just pick a one which is like simpler to start with and then you can go step by step okay that's good to hear <laughs> let me explore a bit on this thank sure, you so much sure. Okay. Thank you. We have a question from Manashri who says, uh, I took break uh, after 10 years of service with IT.net. Now I'm upgrade upgradation to my skill set with Azuri technology. So how do I approach to new career set? Okay, so if you were into um, Windows.net and C Sharp, uh, right up, uh, those technologies are pretty much here if you want to get into it. You can advance yourself by um, WPF. And these days, uh, generically, um, more applications are moving towards AngularJS, HTML5. So those could be the sister technologies that you want to gain knowledge of uh, before you apply. Um, that, does that answer your question? Manashree, um, you can unmute your oh, Hello, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah, uh, this is Manashree. Yeah, hi. Yeah, hi, ma'am. Uh, actually, uh, uh, I want to uh, just uh, turn to my one other technology as Azure. It's uh, because mm -hmm. uh, now it's a cloud development is uh, more yes. advanced technology. So I yeah, want to yeah. move towards it. So how do I actually, currently I'm doing certifications with uh, Microsoft Azure, right? Correct. Develop means I'm planning. So uh, with that certifications, how would I able to get the job opportunity? So can you suggest? Okay, so you, you want to go into cloud computing and yeah, yeah. Uh, correct, and uh, the Microsoft Azure certification is the right yeah. way actually to proceed because um, their certifications are, are considered good. Now, um, so certification demonstrates that you have theoretical working knowledge, um, but you can supplement that by having some practical knowledge as well. Uh, and that could be gaining some hands-on experience uh, into yeah, but, it. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, I need to have some experience because that will be the ratios in my Azure technology, right? Yeah, cloud yeah. technology. So my skill will be a uh, new skill means it will be precious will be considered, right? See, uh, in that technology you're a fresher, but you you have enough experience in some other technology, so that will not get discounted. And ultimately, yeah, okay, that practical so, knowledge cloud. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, so okay. So what you should do is. Uh, how how do you get some practical knowledge on on yeah. cloud computing right and maybe yeah. not just restrict to azure just take cloud computing in general so yeah. um again um I'm a, I'm a big fan of actually open source development okay. um this particular project um eclipse tree and you yeah. may have heard of eclipse ide right so this yeah, uses cloud cloud yeah. um, uh, behind the scene so your code doesn't have to be on your desktop it could be on cloud so okay. you could actually maybe you know contribute or maybe take a look to see and also you can search for other uh, open source projects that are using cloud and specifically using azure okay. so that will give you some um, working knowledge of cloud okay. computing right second yeah. thing right when you're going for interviews you can clearly yeah. say that you, you worked on .NET and now you want to move to this because that's your new interest yeah. right. and it's okay to join as a fresher because you have experience yeah. in some other technology and people uh, switch uh, technologies while they're working as well so that doesn't mean that they become like a beginner right I mean yeah. Yeah, and because you have a knowledge of a previous technology, you will pick up things yeah. fast. So you, you yeah. can be clear in your interviews to say that uh, you're keen to work on this technology, but then you, your resume should carry a few points which demonstrate your interest. Okay. Right, so 
make your resume stronger that clearly shows that you are someone who's interested in cloud computing read some technical blogs on cloud com computing maybe um contribute something somewhere so that it, it reflects on your resume your interest reflects on your resume strongly yeah. thanks ma'am okay. thank you thanks. hi snigna this is brahada here yeah uh, is hello the one? hello yes brahada go ahead uh, hello yeah okay okay uh, actually Sita, i have a common question it's like uh, you know there are so many uh, women who uh, might have worked previously into a technical part especially into shift basis work so uh, due to personal reason like marriage or after this uh, you know child or something uh, they are, they will they'll not be able to continue with the shift based work so uh, for me also it has happened the same way it was just six months break after my marriage mm -hmm. but uh, i made to have my child but that is different uh, i just want to get into an um, in an environment where there is no shift so my previous role it is like you uh, know it was into it operations um, then it was into incident management and then it was into technical part. But now, right now, I am searching for a part where it is in. If I am just searching with the last, uh, I mean, technical part, uh, mm -hmm. mostly I am getting getting an US based uh, opportunity only. So, but still, mm -hmm. I have a uh, some good knowledge in incident management and uh, IT operations lead. I can lead a team where you know IT operations is happening. Uh, so, so do you have any um, good suggestion like where people have worked in shift in the past who will be able to shift into one day day job uh, no, after this break? Okay, so um, yeah, I, 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 I've seen I've seen some cases, not that many though, but I've seen some cases. So your role, okay. uh, previous role as operations manager or um, was it production management or it was it like just a, uh, it is technical part so it is something like a backup backup administration so uh, you know taking care of backup of the servers um, okay so it's almost like windows linux right supporting those technical yeah. teams okay yeah. okay all right so but, uh, i is... have a knowledge in this uh, incident management and uh, you know it operations lead as well so, but uh, mm -hmm. I couldn't get any opportunities based on that. I can see so many uh, opportunities, but uh, I, I'm not getting that. So I'm applying, but uh, I don't know why it is lagging, where it is lagging, and there is a break. Okay. Also, I would like to know about this testing uh, also. Uh, I have heard a number of people saying that even you, do, you doesn't have in much experience in the testing. Uh, for manual testing, they say that doesn't need much experience and it is enough to have a good knowledge in that so don't we need any certification ISB we see some certification is there right so is it must to have that certification or is it enough to prepare ourselves so um, okay so let me give us three questions let me just write it down uh, so I'll start with the last one first so if you're getting into a role of uh, QA quality assurance and testing mm -hmm. then um, a certification does help so but even if you do not have certification since you have past experience in technology and in operations management you you you, you can actually go into this area without any certification because unless you're going into automation uh, mm -hmm. for manual testing it, it's really um, the knowledge that counts <clears throat> so certification okay. helps for those who are starting afresh, completely from scratch, like uh, mm -hmm. out of college. But uh, okay. for other people, um, it, it it doesn't. It's not really a must unless you want to go into automation, where you're automating the manual um, testing activities. That will okay. be a separate uh, field, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want to apply for a tester role, then you could be really uh, upfront about it and, and mention it in your resume that you do not have experience in that area, but you have experience in these technologies and you want to move on to this role. And okay. uh, and it, it should not be a hurdle in at least getting a call for interview. Mm -hmm. Now, some okay. of the roles are um, 
front office user facing where people work in shifts. Like for example, if you're uh, facing off operations and they're based out of US, then mm -hmm. uh, there may be a need for people to be available during that hours. But a pure technology role, like you said, you were helping uh, the backend support for network and databases and so forth. That should not be um, US or you know, um, shift specific. That sh that sounds more like a common day-to-day -day job. Mm -hmm. um, when so you said you applied, but you're not getting a response, or whenever you get a response, it's mostly from the US-based companies. Yeah. So for the, yeah. Okay. So why I'm conscious you, that uh, more specific to the backup technologies, the thing is yeah. only in a very big enterprise we are having backup and storage. But if Correct. you notice in small enterprise, one the uh, only the Windows and Unix team itself will take care of the backup and storage. So they will not get, have any separate role for uh, backup team. So already the opportunity seems to be very less. In in that small number of opportunities, if we need to get uh, you know uh, non shift based, uh, and I can see that so many freshers and uh, guys right they are ready to do a flexible time right. So that's when we are uh, like uh, lagging getting the opportunities. So that's one of my biggest concern. So so that is the reason I thought of shifting to you know the previous. Uh, role I mean in which previously I was working or something into some if I need to take a different role the thing is uh, I will not be able to have that much confidence or I'll be a little bit afraid to get into a new role so we are having some different portals right to get trained mm -hmm. on technologies or anything mm -hmm. like I mean example testing so right. we have yeah. Portals, right? yeah 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 Okay, I agree that <clears throat> if you have limited options and you have constraints, then you face a lot of competition and then chances of getting through uh, minimizes. Yeah. So you're already self-aware in terms of what your options are on table. And the wiser decision could be to switch tracks and find something which for which you have a passion and you can do well. If you do not have um, enough background in that area, then you can spend some time gaining knowledge of it. Okay. I know and, uh, QA. And... Sorry for the interruption, Nikta. Um, you were saying some Eclipse, like, some portals, right? Yeah. So, is yeah. There, are those portals which was displaying in this video uh, are they for learning portals, like Allison? Okay, so Eclipse J is actually open source uh, project. So uh, this is where you can contribute. You can browse through the code as well to learn, but it's not really a learning portal. A, a learning okay. portal could be like a Plural site or Linda or Coursera kind of things, where where okay. you can see what courses are available in QA. Mm -hmm. So and okay. QA testing is a space where. Uh, there is a lot of need because uh, it's an important area and over there you may even get something part-time to begin with see if if, mm -hmm. if an area interests you right you can start with something very basic you can compromise on maybe compensation and other things just to get mm -hmm. a foot in it and once okay. you have some confidence you can make more demands mm -hmm. okay if if that works for you okay Okay. Just, just be more flexible and open-minded in this case because you, you know what your limitations are. Yeah, yeah. So it's Nikta. Uh, can we just move on to the next question uh, by Shweta? Uh, sure. We, uh, Shweta says, I was previously working on PHP but now want to change my profile and want to do data science. So my question is, if I do it online, what are the chances of getting hired? Okay, so data sciences is something everyone wants to do it. Um, it it's a very hot field um, and it's interesting as well. Now, again, the, uh, the same thing, um, data sciences, um, so there, there are two parts of it. One is the data science modeling and the other is the data science engineering where you come up with tools like Hadoop, etc., which can help you in modeling. Um, 
you you can take courses and you can do something of your own to get experience but just um again it's one of the fields where if you do not have enough exposure especially on the sciences bit then it's hard to get into it um, most people uh, who are beginners into this data sciences field, I, I do see them more doing testing rather than actually creating a new model. They are, they are playing with the data set, but not really creating a new model. Um, but that can give them experience to go into later. Um, so tra uh, transition from PHP to data science, it, it's actually a very big leap because those are totally two different areas. Um, but if you want to do it, then do your courses, do some project of your own. Um, there's so much literature on data sciences on the internet. There's so many projects floating on. Contribute to them, and that that could help you get a la uh, get like uh, a role in that area. But probably at, from the the beginner level only. Yeah, thank you, Gajri, for the opportunity. Really appreciate it. And it was really um, nice interacting with um, all of you. And maybe just one word of advice. A lot of you want to get into the field of QA automation testing. Um, it would be good if you if you, you all can connect offline and share some tips and tricks with yourself and form a community to help each other. Some of you already have experience in this area. Uh, so that will be good. Yeah, that is a good point. Uh, also, uh, Snigda will be a part of the roadshow uh, happening in Mumbai this Saturday. So, uh, if you haven't registered for it and you are willing to attend uh, the roadshow, please log on to our JFH portal and go to the event page to register yourself for the R3 roadshow. You will have speed mentoring zones, a face to face mentoring. Uh, time with the mentors available there and we also have workshops for reskilling so please uh, make it and do not miss it if you need more updates on jobs for her portal follow us on facebook and twitter pages also visit our reskilling page on our portal to upskill yourself and get services like resume writing and thank you everyone it was a wonderful session thanks for attending